Two American League teams. We'll see the Chicago White Sox as they play against the Kansas City Royals. Live on 2K Sports. And a view from inside Kauffman Stadium and that beautiful waterfall here. Favorite spot, this ballpark for power hitters. The home field advantage goes to a pitcher's yard today. We're in Kansas City with the Royals. 2K Sports presents our MLB broadcast, so glad you're there. Starting pitcher for our ball game, Brian Bannister. As he gets into this White Sox lineup, Steve, a little strategy. Well, you watch Brian Bannister out of the mound, you're going to recognize nothing's overpowering with his stuff. He really needs to command and move the ball around and work his sequence of pitches. Lineup for the White Sox. Let's take a look. It is courtesy of Pepsi. Any of these bats stand out, John? Well, all you ask from your players is to give them some consistency, and Johnny Damon throughout his career has done that. He's a guy that can hit for average. He can hit the ball of the ballpark if you make a mistake. The thing about it is, he's a winning player. It seems like any team he ever plays on, they end up winning championships. That's what you need from a veteran like him. Here's Johnny Damon at the plate. It was a loss last time out for the Royals. They'd like to turn it around quickly here, game two of this series against the White Sox. Well, this is one of those ball clubs that they, they'll win some and then they'll lose some. And Bannister gets him swinging for the first strike. This team five and five now through the last ten. Well, this is a team that's looking for some sort of spark, like a catalyst to try to heat things up to get on a winning streak. Pitch on the way. Strike three. Damon on a swing and a miss turned away. Well, he made that one look easy, huh? I mean, look at three pitches and a strikeout. And it's Alexei Ramirez now, one away. Gone six out of 14 against Bannister. This one's pretty well hit to deep left center. Anderson will field as he gets to it for the up. Now we'll take a quick look at the Royals and how they line up defensively. But Steve, anybody stand out? Jason Kendall's always been known for his ability to call the game. His relationship with the pitching staff has been critical to his success and his team's success. Base is empty with two outs. Strike and one. Bannister gets him swinging for the first strike. Boy, that good late movement down that cut fastball. Unbelievable action on that strike pitch. Two. Strike two, no balls and two strikes. Canerco now will look to tighten up that zone. I pulled the string on that curveball, took a little bit off and had him way out in front. He was uh, able to ring up that K and that's going to get him out of the inning. No runs, no hits, nobody crossed. Mark Burley is going to be pitching. He's going to start for Chicago. And he gets into the Kansas City lineup, John. Uh, what's his approach? Well, don't blink your eye on this one, because if you do, you're going to miss some pitches for Mark Burley, the quickest worker in all of baseball. Swung and a ground ball to third. And Pierre is retired. And we'll have a chance now to see how the Royals line up, presented by Pepsi. Scouting pick, John, who are we uh, looking at today? When you're a manager, the toughest thing to do is to figure out where everyone fits into your lineup card. You look at this lineup today, Billy Butler is entrenched in the middle of this batting order. He's a run producer, he's a power guy, and he's the guy that when the game is on the line, you want him up to bat. Let's see if he can deliver today. Smash towards the hole, and Conerco makes the catch. And a moment to check out the defensive alignment for the White Sox. And uh, Steve, individual factors out there. Well, they're confident with Alex Rios out there. Just a solid all-around defender with a strong throwing arm. He's a quality defensive player. Two outs, space is empty. Fastball misses away, 1 0. Here's the 1 0 from Burley. Swing and a hit by Butler. Rios will field. And the sides retired as they head into the dugout. So Mike Burley gets him 1 2 3. He gets through the first inning without allowing a hit. And it'll be the White Sox. Big Bats ready to make an appearance. 
Leading it off, Carlos Quinton. Leading the MLB in batting average. Number 20, Carlos Quinton. The pitch from Bannister has him out in front as he swings and misses strike one. Just a solid offensive player day in and day out and a guy that uh, really can deliver for this offense. Pitcher gets a little help right there. A dirt pitch for a swinging strike. Big swing and a miss. Carlos Quentin goes down swinging. Let's see the K cam on this 12 6 curveball. Gordon. It was not a good looking swing on that pitch. Well, good at bats starts with good swings, and bad at bats end with bad swings. And I think he'd want that last swing back if he had the choice. And Beckham's in the box. Oh, and Bannister gets him swinging for the first strike. Well, if you're going to be late on the fastball, you're going to have trouble hitting up here, and he's struggling right now. Well hit towards the middle. And Beckham set down. Let's have a look at the Central Division race brought to you by State Farm. With the All-Star break just around the corner now. First place, the White Sox. In the second spot, the Twins. In third place, it's the Royals. In the fourth spot, it's the Indians. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. The Chicago White Sox on fire right now, back from the dead. They couldn't do anything right before, and now they're doing everything right. And Alex Rios up. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops and runs scored. Top five. Ah, and he can't catch up with that one. 0-1. There's a swing and a smash. Anderson will field. And that's going to do it in this half inning. Seven pitches and it's done. That's how you save your arm and go deep into a game. Both teams still looking for that first run here in Kansas City. And here's Rick on Keel. Number 24, Rick Ankiel. Burley with a delivery. Ball one. Now swing and a shot towards second. And that'll retire on Keel. Second base. Number 13. Diaspo at the plate. Base is empty with one away. A swing and a fly ball to left center field. And that one's going to drop in. That'll be our first hit of the game. And that will bring Mike Avilas to the plate. A one out and a man on first base. That big single right there gives them a couple outs to work with to see if they can push him across the board. One down, runner at first. Burley with a delivery. This is popped down the right field line. Should be room. Tried to track that one down, but comes up empty. Good movement to that cutter, and he's in the hole now, 0-2. Well, outstanding movement on the cut fastball, but he left it out over the heart of the plate. He got away with one right there. You're Swing out. and a miss on the cutter that time. Two down. K-Cam's going to give us a good look at the cutter. Well, this one's coming up and in on him, and he chases it. A tough, tough pitch to hand. Not too much he could have done on that one, John. That was where a hitter just made the field pretty bad by a pretty good pitcher. Well, yeah, he did, and that's just one of those things. You have to tip your hat to the pitcher. He made great pitches. Liner towards the hole. That tag, and he is out at third. They pick up no runs on two hits and strand one. Still nobody on the board here at Coffin Stadium. And if you're just joining our 2K Sports Major League Baseball broadcast with John Crook and Steve Phillips, I'm Gary Thorne. Leading it off, A.J. Przinski, one of the best batting averages in the league. The pitch from Bannister. Swings on that first pitch. Misses the fastball. 0-1.
Here's the pitch. He fouls that one off. And A.J. Przezinski strikes out, unable to make contact on that pitch. Well, with two strikes on the hitter, he went with the heat. I tell you what, a fastball in the low 90s, still very, very effective. And Mark Tien up right there in the top five in home runs. Swung on and hit. This one to Anderson. Two away. Staffs issuing the fewest free passes. Brought to you by State Farm. Number one, the White Sox. The Royals in second, third, the Mariners, the Rays fourth, and we've got the Rangers. They are fifth. Well, you better be swinging today. And, you know, as a hitter, you like facing guys like this who don't walk a lot of hitters. That ball is belted deep to left center field. Ball is on its way. And they get the first run of the ball game. That solo shot, that is a big fly ball, one nothing. Now Gary looked like he was setting on that pitch. He got it and drove it out of the park. What they're going to want to do in this ball game now is take advantage of that and build that momentum up. The well, they need to still be aggressive out there and go right after it. Number 18. Well, that's Johnny what you want. Damon. Run support for your pitching and attack the opposition. That's what the White Sox are doing right here. First pitch on the way to Damon. And Bannister gets him swinging for the first strike. This is Steve I guess with that big fly the inning these guys were hoping for. Well that's exactly right Gary. I mean, you want to have the big inning when you get that opportunity put a crooked number up on the board. And he'll step on first to retire the side. And our first scoring of the game here in the third one run in the White Sox have the lead one to nothing. Illuminated by the big cans above Kaufman Stadium on this great evening. Ryan N. Anderson. And we've got Anderson batting. Strike one. And Burley gets it by, called strike, and the count will go to 0 and 1. Now that he's elevated his eyes looking for that high fastball, let's see if he goes back down in the zone. Ball! And Anderson lets it go outside for a ball. We went with the big curveball off the plate, trying to get him to reach for it, but he lays off. Liner between first and second. And Canerco makes the catch. Number 18. And Kendall's in the box. Nobody on base, one away. Burley with a delivery. And that's on the outside corner for a strike. Swing and a rocket toward short. And it's caught by Ramirez. And be sure to tune in next Sunday. It's going to be Ryan Braun and the Milwaukee Brewers as they take on the Cardinals in St. Louis. You can catch that game at 2 o'clock Eastern. Really looking forward to calling that game. It's got a chance to be a very interesting matchup between those two teams. Bases empty and two down. And the first pitch. And he checks his swing. They say he didn't go around, but they're going to appeal down to third. Well, obviously not the call they were fishing for, so we'll try it again. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. And they go quietly offensively in this half inning. Nothing across. No runs yet for Kansas City. None other than Ozzy. That's Ozzy Gian. And they're probably very happy to have that one run lead at this moment. And it's Alexei Ramirez now to lead it off. He's in the top echelon of hits right now. And Ramirez settles in. First pitch. Swing and a miss for strike one. Line towards second. This one into the gap, rolling towards the wall. And this rolls all the way to the wall. Ramirez is headed for third. 
He now, will defense, hold up at third. Chicago That's going to be a triple. Base, Still no out. 14, Paul Gennerko. A lot of times when you think of a triple, you're thinking of runs batted in, one or possibly two. But this time, he's the only guy in base. But he's leading off this inning with that triple and a chance for a big inning. And here's Paul Canerco leading the league in home runs. Ryan Bannister runs that count in his favor to 0-2. All the pressure on the hitter right now, he knows that he has to protect the plate in order not to strike out. And Canerco will take it down low for a ball. But if you're going to miss, this is where you want to miss. Throw that breaking ball at the bottom of the strike zone. If the hitter swings and puts it in play, it's a ground ball out. Rung him up. Strike three. Count that one as big. Took a big hack at that one up in the zone. He's going to be seeing that one in his dreams all night long. Base runner 90 feet away from Carlos Quinton, who's at the plate. He's number one in runs scored in the league. Swings at that fastball and misses. 0-1. Strike two. Now with no balls, two strikes. Quinton needs to protect that strike zone. Swing and a drive. Deep left center. This one towards Pierre. That's two gone. And that will not get the runner home from third base. On tap for the Royals. One game left for the White Sox. That's tomorrow. And then they'll be off to take on the Angels in that bat of Bobby Abreu. That's going to get going on Friday night. Then they'll continue the road trip for the next series. The Seattle Mariners will be hosting. Not too tough a schedule coming up for them. And Ramirez is home. So the rally here energized every new opportunity they take advantage of. Alex Leo. Good pitch down low, Steve, but a better at bat. Well, he did a real nice job going down in his swing to get that low ball to be able to pick up the hit. And Alex Rios up. Well, they've definitely got a rhythm going right now. There's a swing and a drive deep to left field. And Pierre grabs that one, and the side's retired. Well, they score once on two hits, one man left. White Sox by two. David Jesus now to lead it off. 0 for 1 thus far. Number 9, David Jesus. First count on Jesus. Here it comes. And Burley gets it by. Called strike, and the count will go to 0 and 1. Well, they've got a couple of hits here, and we're into the fourth inning, so they maybe they're starting to get something going. And the second time through the lineup, maybe they'll try to figure something out, Gary. Fastball in there, called third strike. One up. Boy, a nice looking set of pitches that time. He didn't daddle around to the strike zone. Well, nothing wasted, just three pitches over the plate. Sits him down. And Butler's in the box. He's hitting 333 lifetime off Mark Burley. Base is empty, one out. The first pitch. Pulls back on that curveball, takes a strike on one. Burley with a delivery. Started to go around. That pitch is in there anyway. 0 and 2. Here's a swing and a line drive. That gets down. That'll put him on the tying run up. So that brings up Rick on keel. Let's take a chance now to take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. First in doubles, first in batting average, and they're also the number one team hitting with runners in scoring position. That batting average driving in runners. This lineup knows how to hit in the clutch. They're patient. They let the ball come to them, and then they deliver. There's a strike of the knees on one. The pitch. Strike two now with no balls and two strikes on Keel needs to protect the strike zone. 
You can really stay out of big trouble in the big inning if you can spot your fastball down in the zone. Rick on Keel comes up empty, took the cut, but he didn't catch up to it. Well, just a great sequence of pitches. Three good choices by the pitcher and the catcher, and he finishes them off quickly. All pitchers love that. Those are short at bats. You get it done in a hurry. And the first pitch. It's taken for a ball. Bottom dropping out on that burly pitch. Now if you're going to miss, this is where you want to miss. Throw that breaking ball at the bottom of the strike zone. If the hitter swings and puts it in play, it's a ground ball out. Grounded up the middle, fielded by Ramirez. Throws to first side, is retired. Mark Burley, that's another good inning. Four innings, shutout mound work. Boy, he's keeping a tidy house right now. Fifth inning upcoming. It's going to be Pruszynski. And right now, top five and runs batted in in the lead. First pitch to him. There's a swing and a smash. Anderson will field. No problem for him as he gets that out. And here's Martina in the top ten and hits. One out, base is empty. And Bannister gets him swinging for the first strike. Hit sharply towards the hole. And that'll set down Tian. Nice play at third. He understands that he's got a lot of time. Catch it, then come up throwing. Nice job. Base is empty with two outs. Here's the first pitch. And Bannister gets him swinging for the first strike. Well, anytime you can spot your slider down in the strike zone, you're going to have a lot of success in the game. And I tell you what, any hitter will tell you, anytime that slider's down in the zone, it's almost impossible to hit. Here it comes. He can't connect on that. Jim Tomei up empty on a swing. And they're unable to make any noise here in this half inning. The White Sox, too. Kansas City, nothing. Leading off the bottom of the fifth inning. That's Trey Hillman you're looking at. And you can imagine right now the inner workings here in the club trying to get this thing tied up. Avila's at the plate. And here's the first one. He makes contact, line drive. And it is in there. That's going to bring the tying run to the plate. To so the Alex plate. Gordon will come up one. well into the Third season. Game. Here's a look at the Number White Sox four. schedule. Alex Final game with Gordon. Kansas City is tomorrow. And it's on the road to take on the Rangers and uh, one of the game's leading hitters, Josh Hamilton. Team they beat in the previous series between the two. That's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Following that, they kick off a home series with the Angels, another division leader. Kansas City gets a shot at it right now. You have to like the aggressiveness on the bases here. Good piece of hitting, but they're going first to third. You take the extra base. Those are the little things that lead to victory. And now time is called. And they're coming out of the dugout and heading to the mound. Now you don't know how long he's going to stay with this pitcher. You're going to have to wait and see what they decide. He may be done. No outs in the corners are covered. Burley with a delivery. Oh, that one's going to be outside. Ball one. But Gary, he's not felt any pressure out there on the mound. The defense has not felt that much pressure either. We only one runner left on base. And, you know, we're moving through the middle part of this ball game. So, you know, they're doing a nice job shutting down this offense. Head up the middle. That gets through. The runner's going to come in to score. Chances coming here by the Bushels Bowl for Kansas City. Number 18, Jason Kendall. 
What more do you need to see? Now you have to question his confidence, giving up three straight hits. Not much going right out there at this point. No one out yet. Runners at first and second. Now Przinsky sets up. And Burley gets it by. Called strike and the count will go to 0 and 1. Well if he can throw this cutter down and away like this he's going to be very effective. That's an outstanding pitch. This one's grounded hard up the middle. Throw is not in time and that will be an infield single. Fantastic chance here. Well as a pitcher there's absolutely nothing you can do about this. You hate these type of hits but he makes a great pitch. The ball just hit in an absolute perfect spot where no one can get to it in time to beat him on the throw to first. That's a base hit. Tying Rudd could come home. And here's Anderson heading home. And he comes home. That's it. We are tied. Well, the rally here energized every new opportunity they take advantage of. They need to get an out right now. I mean, this offense just has keep, kept the pressure on them. They need to regroup and get an out. And we'll get to see Tony Pena pitching. He's been chosen to take over out there. Well, today started not overly sharp. Didn't have his best stuff. Kept his team close, but now it's going to come down to the late innings of the game, and can the bullpen get the job done? The pitch, and that's a strike. The Jesus has now got to guard the plate. Here's the pitch. Oh. Good slider that time. Ruled the ball. One and two. One two pitch coming. Smashes that one towards the shortstop. It falls in there, and Anderson will score. Up to the, okay, the defense needs to stop right now. They need to put up an out here. This offense just has been relentless to see. RBI, let's see if Billy Butler can get it. And when you got the bases loaded like this, this is the opportunity you look for in a game. It may not come again. Well, when you have a lead, you want to keep adding to it. A big opportunity here oh. to spread the margin. First pitch is a slider low, 1 0. Oh. His career averaged 257 lifetime off the White Sox. He watches that fastball. It'll even up the count at 101. He looked like he was looking for a pitch out over the plate. That fastball down and in locked him up a little bit. Back behind second. One down. And he's got it. That'll keep the bases loaded. Big time pressure right now. Squarely on the shoulders of Tony Pena. Let's see if he's up to it. This is a really tight spot to find yourself in. Just one man down, three on board. A face hit in this situation, Gary, could blow this game wide open. The batter needs to be patient at the plate, get a good pitch, and put a good swing on it. Oh! Oh! It's hit foul by Ankeel. And Keel fouls off another. And because the count's still one and two, I tell you what, this hitter still has to stay in this defensive mode. This is a pitcher that can strike you out, so you better be leery and just try to put the ball in play and hope you can get a base hit. With two strikes, the hitter won at the fastball. He got it, but didn't do anything with it. Diaspo at the plate. Two hits on two at-bats. Lifetime against Pena. Here's the first pitch. Ball. Fastball just misses. One and oh. At the belt, the 1-0. And he looks at a fastball in there, 1-1. Some guys really like the low fastball. In this situation, though, he ends up taking the pitch. And that's taken outside for a ball, two, one strike count. The 2-1 pitch, up the middle. Oh, mercy. Well, that did not miss him by much, but he got out of the way. And Kendall will cross the dish. And Pierre also scores. Hitting? Well, they say it's contagious. It is contagious here in this ball game because they can't be stopped. Avilas at the plate. And Steve, the offense continues to produce. They keep building on it. You know, after giving up runs like that, this is where the pitcher has to bow his neck and shut down the opponent. Damage control. 
This is where you uh, begin to wonder whether this game is going to start slipping away or not. Hit on the ground up the middle. And Ramirez fields the ball. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. Boy, a manager loves to see this. They strike for an enormous inning. Kansas City's got the lead now. Top of the lineup coming up. And so Johnny Damon leads it off. 0 for 2 thus far. Number 18, Johnny Damon. First pitch on the way to Damon. And Bannister gets him swinging for the first strike. Here's the delivery. Strike two. No balls. Two strikes. Veteran Damon, though, he'll cut it down and try to just poke it out there. Coming off of a game where he had a major swing and a miss. Gets away. He's heading for first. And he's out. They get him with that throw to first base. Now, Gary was really going for it there, but the catcher's able to get a handle on it. Give it over to first base in time. If he doesn't get it there, who knows what it might lead to. Outstanding hustle to make sure he doesn't get on on a third strike. And uh, in the batter's right, box, right. it's Ramirez. And one of the league's most prolific hitters in the top five. Here's a swing and a fly ball. Oh. Foul ball. He just couldn't keep it fair. Struck him out. That's and number eight in the game. A good, great confidence right there in his stuff. Could have wasted a pitch right there, but he figured, why worry? That's a great job of finishing off the batter in a hurry. Never got a chance to see much. And here's Paul Canerco. He's the league leader in ribbies. Swing liner back up the middle. And it gets down. The streak is on. Now That's going to bring Carlos Quinton up. Just a solid offensive right. player day in and day out. And a guy that uh, really can deliver for this offense. He's the league leader in hits. The pitch from Bannister. That one misses. It gets away from the catcher. That one swung on, hit in the air deep to left field. And Pierre grabs that one, and the side's retired. Nope. Quick look at Ozzie Guillen looking up. The thoughts of the manager, one can only speculate, but at this point, you've got to believe he's, he's got some words for that next practice. First pitch fastball misses badly that time, 1-0. The 1-0 pitch. And that's hit Damon to field. The catch is made. For the Kansas City Wolves. Center fielder. Number 30. And we've got Anderson batting. Single home a run in his last at bat. Here's the pitch. Swung on. That is hit. Oh, avoided the path of that ball. That was right up the middle. Was that a Oh, Jason Kendall will come up. Well, that's all you can ask your hitter to do. Find a way to get on base, and he does with one out. That base hit right there. A little bit of momentum. Let's see if they can move him around and possibly score a run. Gets one at second. And he's going to hang on to it. No relay, so they will not get the double play. So they get the lead runner at second base, but I think they would have liked to have gotten two right there. And here's Juan Pierre. He's the league leader in stolen bases. First pitch, and he misses the fastball. Strike one. Look, Gary, with his speed, he's the kind of guy that could bunt for a base hit, even with two outs, and then try to steal himself in the scoring position. Catcher can't control it. The throw, and safe at second, no problem. So they can't make the play. Look, Gary, to make the error right there, you just don't want to do that. It's just not good baseball. Lays off that time, but it's in there. A knee-high strike. Evens things at two. Better to go after the fastball when the guy has... Ground ball towards second. Back up. And he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. So they pick up a hit, but leave a man at second and fail to score. Kansas City, five. 
And Beckham's in the box. Drove in a run earlier in the game. Number 15, Gordon Beckham. First pitch. Takes a swing at that fastball. Can't connect 0-1. Oh, nine outs to go right now and, and leading by three. I mean, I think you have to start throwing strikes. Just go at the hitters, force them to put in play. Do not give them free passes. He got him. That's nine Ks now. His pitches complement one another. They work off of each other. And he used a tremendous sequence right there. One, two, three, strike out. See you later. The pitch from Bannister. It's strike one. Can't make contact on the fastball. Offensively, now they've got to start to work the count. They've got to try to get base run towards the middle. And that's going to be a base hit for Rios. Now, and take a look at the teams doing their best to get on base. Brought to you by State Farm. Number one, the White Sox. Second, the Yankees. The Twins third. Fourth, the Red Sox. And for the Orioles, they are fifth. If patience is a virtue, this is the most virtuous team in all of baseball. Number one in on-base percent. Swing and a shot to third. And that gets through. The tying run will come to bat. The best now, hitters in the game the use the whole field. You have to be able to go the other way. Even when the pitch is over the heart of the plate. That's what he does right there. Guys prolong their career, not with power, but with base hits that are hit that way. Swing and a miss on a ball below the knees. Nothing in one. Boy, that good late movement down. That cut fastball. Unbelievable action on that pitch. There's a smash towards the hole. They tried to go down with that 0-1 pitch, but it gets blasted right back for the base hit. The way he went after that in the box, Steven, looked like he might have been guessing down there. Well, I'll tell you what, you have to make contact behind in the count. He got a pitch over the heart of the plate and took advantage of it. And Bannister gets him swinging for the first strike. Well, it's tough to tell a hitter to stay back on a fastball, but this is what he needs to do. He's jumping out, trying to get to it, and is just way out in front. Pitch on the way. There's a ball. Hit well. A high drive deep into center field. A grand slam home run. It's the definition of clutch hitting. Trailing by three, delivered the grand slam. Wow, now the momentum has shifted. Well, you talk about big hitting. How about grand salami? No little ball. Well, that kind of a cut, and what a lead. Boy, he drove that one. A complete and total collapse on the mound here for the Royals. You know, these sorts of innings make or break games. Nobody on base, one away. First pitch on the way to Damon. Curveball just misses, 1 0. And, oh. and Steve, further proof of this game of baseball saying the lead is never enough. It wasn't. Well, certainly not. I mean, it's best. That one's drilled to short. Now up to the plate. Two away. Here are your hit leaders for the month. Brought to you by State Farm. Alexi Ramirez. And a shot here for Alexi Ramirez. Two down. Struck out swinging last time. The pitch from Bannister. Swing and a miss on the cutter. 0-1. Well, good movement on that cutter. He had him way out on his front foot. Hit hard to second. Throws on to first side is retired. A strike for four runs and they move back on top. The White Sox leading now. They've got the momentum. And if you're just joining in, Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Cruck bringing you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. It's going to be to Jesus.
And Przezinski calls for the pitch. Drill towards third. And it's in there, the tying run on board. Well, anytime you get your first hitter up in the inning, big things could happen. It opens up a lot of holes in the defense, and it makes it a lot easier to hit for the guys behind you. Now, here we go in a big moment. It's Billy Butler. A runner on first, no out. First pitch is on the way to Butler. Just off the outside, and it's 1-0. Well, I think right now, when you're up by a run in the seventh inning, you've shortened the game. You've got the lead. You want... Swing and a rocket towards short. Yeah. One away. Now up to the well, I thought they had a the shot at a double one. play right there, but at the least they got hit. one out. Now a runner in scoring position Great. at second base. Thank Here you. is Rick on Keel. Now the big opportunity for Kansas City. Here's the pitch. Ball! There's a swing and a long high drive hit deep to right center field. Great turnaround for him. A two run homer. They lead by a one. Oh, look at the chance of winning. On our two-run homer, courtesy of our WPA Pepsi Ground. Anytime you give the team a lead late in the game, it's going to make the manager very happy. You think that's what it's all about, making the manager happy? Well, sometimes making the general manager happy is more important. <laughs> His name's on the check. For the, play, for the Kansas City Royals. Kansas City Kansas knew to win this game, they were going to have to get offensive production. Alberto Big time to come up in this situation to get a hit. They got it done, and they take the lead. One out, nobody on. And we'll get to see Matt Thornton pitching. The White Sox turning to a reliever here. And he gets into the Kansas City lineup, John. Uh, what's his approach? Well, if I was still playing, Matt Thornton is the type of guy would. There's a swing, line drive, center field. And it gets down a three for four game. Good hitting job. State Farm brings you a look at the group of arms with the best ERA for the month. The White Sox number one, the Red Sox second, in third, the Twins, the Angels fourth. And the Mariners fill. We take a look at these low ERAs right here. It really points to a philosophy for the organization. Limit the damage. Don't give up the multiple runs in an inning. Give up one, but don't give up a bunch. And he gets that one down. His second hit, two for four today. Well, that's hit number 15, and then for that one, boy, you get 15 hits in the game. The matter you can do is sit back and relax and watch his team work. First pitch on the way to Gordon. Swinging and a miss, and he falls behind on the count 0-1. Well, that fastball right there, he just blew it by him. Pitch in the dirt, blocked by the catcher. The 1-1 now. Takes a swing at that fastball, doesn't get to it, 1-2. and two. The 1-2 pitch. That's it foul by Gordon. The pitch hit up the middle, and he's up with it. And there's one, and they get it. They turn two. So they strike for two runs, and that gives them the lead. Kansas City's got the lead now. Ray Hillman. He got what he needed out of his lineup that last time through. This lead now something he can try to protect if he can get some solid pitching. Right. And Bannister gets him swinging for the first strike. Look here, I think they're going to look at anything they can. If there's an inside pitch, get hit by the pitch, get on. Hot shot towards the hole. Yeah, and okay. Canerco retired. Right fielder, number 20. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now. Hitless so far, he'll get another shot at it now. First pitch to Quinton. Cut fastball, swung on and missed, 0-1. One. one out right here in the eighth inning. Obviously a critical time of the game right now as we're getting short. Up. Hit hard, down the right field side. And DeJesus gets there. 
Well, they followed the advanced scouting reports to a T. They played the outfielders back that time, and he hit it right into the teeth of the defense. And Beckham's in the box. Career average for him, only 135 off the Royals. Smashes that one towards the shortstop. And that is in there. The tying run is on base. Well, they get a man on here with two outs. And now a double in the gap can tie this game. It's Alex Rios. And he starts Rios out. That fastball gets by him on the first pitch, 0-1. Like there's one out here remaining in the eighth inning. You've got to try to do something offensively. And I think there were two outs. Well hit towards the middle. And through for a hit. The go-ahead run is on. Now Courtesy of State Farm, the leaderboard for batting average with runners in scoring position. If I've ever come back as a general manager, I want all these guys on my team because I love how they swing the bat. And they get the job done when the game's on the line. Well, showdown moment in this game right now, Gary, with A.J. Przinski coming to the plate. He loves these sorts of situations. We'll see if he can get it done right here. We'll try it again here. Just one for three thus far. Starts him off swinging at his shoe tops for a strike. Boy, that's some kind of fastball down in the zone right there. The hitter has to be ready for it or he's got no chance to hit it. And there's another one. Couple of quick hits. Well, now after giving up three straight hits, the manager has to start thinking about getting somebody up in the pen. Now here is Mark Tian. And he needs to come through here with two down. Infield got to play back in this situation and get the out at the easiest base. First one to Tian. Here's the pitch. That one swung on, hit in the air to deep right center field. Off the wall on a hop. There's the run, and it gives them the lead. That's going to break the tie. They lead by one. Now batting for the Chicago Well, the sky Lakers. is falling. The sky is falling. I mean, now it's four straight hits. He's got to start wondering what's going on. Maybe he's tipping his pitches or they're just figuring him out. Howard will be the new pitcher as the Royals bring in their reliever. This is where the manager earns his money. Let's see if this move pays off. Now Jim Tomey. Steve, really good vibes here. Hitting is contagious, and when you do it late in a ball game, and there's a swing and a liner towards the gap in left field. It rolls all the way to the wall. There's the throw, and they score the run. Now batting. A big two out hit right there. That's his third hit of the game so far. This man's doing what he has to do to help his team win. And it'll be Joaquim Soria doing the pitching as the Royals bring in their reliever. And uh, as he looks at this White Sox lineup, what are they going to see from him today? Joaquim Soria going to be able to pitch in this one and get a chance to see the unbelievable stuff this guy has. And, and one of the more unknown closers of the game. But with overpowering stuff, and he throws strikes, pounding the strike zone. 0-1 by Soria. Now swinging a shot towards second. Throws to first side is retired. Big offensive inning, five base hits and four runs. The White Sox leading now. They've got the momentum. We'll get a look at that leadoff hitter due up here in the inning. And we've got Anderson batting. Number 32, Ryan N. Anderson. First pitch, here it comes. He swings on that 0-0 delivery, misses the fastball. Strike one. Obviously getting late right now, Gary, and I think that from the pitching perspective, you'll trade an out for a run at this stage of the game, understanding that for every out you get, you're closer to winning. Hit hard on the ground to short. One away. For the Kansas City Royals. Catcher number 18. And Kendall's in the box. Base is empty with one away. And the first pitch.
smash towards the middle, fielded by Ramirez. So Kendall is retired. And Juan Pierre to bat. He bounced out his last time. Swung on, grounded towards the hole. Back up. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. Only five. And it's Alexei Ramirez now to lead it off. He's had one hit four times up. Alexei Ramirez. Soria with a windup. Swings a little early that time, 0 1. Well, you can tell his timing way off after seeing him swing at that four seamer. And it's 0 2. Alexei Ramirez going to have to protect now. Swing and a miss. Three strikes, and Alexei Ramirez is set down. Well, KCAM's going to show us this 12 6 curve. Let's get a better look. And Paul Canerco to bat. Grounded out last time. And he starts Canerco out. Line towards first. And Canerco's got himself a single. Coming to bat. State Farm takes a look at the highest batting average over the last 10 games. All of these guys, quality contact hitters. And, you know, when you're that kind of a hitter, it means that you can hit any kind of pitch the pitcher throws, and you're using the whole field. You're hitting it where it's pitched. Here's Carlos Quinton. Lifetime numbers, two for five off Joaquin Soria. And Quinton's got himself a base hit. Danarco's heading for third. Coming to bat. Well, that's hit number 15 in them for that one. And boy, you get 15 hits in the game. The manager can just sit back and relax and watch his team work. Here is the opportunity for the youngster Gordon Beckham. Great chance here to capitalize. Runners on first and second with one out. First pitch on the way. Up the middle. And he's on now. That's going to be another hit for them. Got Erko's going to try and score here. Coming to bat. Well, a guy that just continues to swing the bat well in this ball game. Three hits right now so far. And it comes with one out in the inning. Can it start a rally? Breaking ball swung on and missed. 0 and 1. Well, not a whole lot you can do when a pitcher's locating that curveball down in the strike zone. There's just not a lot for the ball belted deep left center field, way back, way back, and gone. A home run that could be the game winner. Home run swing and a home run pitch right there. Four seam fastball and clearly he should have gone with something different because it looked like he was waiting for it. And out on the mound we've got Juan Cruz. He's been chosen to take over out there. I'm not sure what they're thinking by bringing the closer in Gary in a situation like this. I'd rest him if I were them. A uh, complete and total collapse on the mound here for the Royals, Gary. Hit up the middle, and that'll get him aboard. They are on a roll. Coming the lineup's back. crossing home the most. We look at our state farm leaderboard. Run scored over the last ten. The White Sox number one. The Twins in second. In third, the Yankees. The Rays fourth. And uh, fifth best, the A's. One out man on first. Here's the pitch. Good pitch as he's late on that one. 0 and 1. And there, Juan Cruz, strike two. He's got some room. Well, you have to be ready for something hard, and this guy wasn't anticipating it. That's why he was late on that two seam fastball. Two men have been put away. Coming to bat for the Chicago White Sox. And as Jim Tell me at the plate. He's already homered twice in this one. Gary, they're having a big offensive day. I think that's pretty obvious, but clearly one of the major components of this offense are his at-bats. I mean, two home runs. He's swinging the bat very well. Looks so comfortable at the plate.
Runner on first, two away. Tillman gets in. Here's the first delivery. Swings at that fastball and misses. 0 and 1. Oh, I fooled him right there. That two seam fastball has to be down in the zone to be effective, but it looked like he was looking for a different pitch. And that's strike three, and mercifully so. Inning comes to a close, but big time damage done. So they add a four spot here to extend their lead even further. There's a familiar face, Isaac Gian looking up. Great game his club has put together. Things have gone really well. And we'll get to see Bobby Jenks pitching. They've decided it was time to make a change here. And he gets into the Kansas City lineup, John. Uh, what's his approach? Well, Bobby Jenks is one of these big, big closers that come in the game, kind of like they were back in the 80s and the early 90s. A big guy that comes out and throws absolute gas. Easy, smooth motion that generates 98 to 100 mile an hour. A line drive towards short. And De Jesus picks up the single. So that brings up Billy Butler. We're talking about a guy who's swinging a pretty hot bat right now. His third hit of this ball game, and it comes with nobody out in the inning. First pitch is on the way to Butler. Ball. And Jenks misses. Well, a non save situation right here in the ninth inning, and they just want to get out. A liner headed for the hole, and Tian with the catch. the catch. And that will hold him at first. Uh, just having some difficulty right now trying to make up this ground, and, and obviously they've got a hill still to climb, and running out of time right now, only two outs remaining, so they've got to get something going and keep it going. Two away. Uh, down to their final out right here, Gary. So, I mean, they're looking pretty dire at this point. And, you know, but listen, funnier things have happened. They've got to get base runners, though. A runner on first with two outs. Jenks with a delivery. Swing a little line drive towards the middle. That's going to be a wrap. Final out of the ball game. White Sox win this in a lopsided victory. A dominating performance, Gary. Yeah, we take a look at our performance that earned the Pepsi Clutch Performer Award. Well, you know, Gary, everyone thinks that the home run's the only way to drive in runs, but not in this game today. This guy, every time he had runners in scoring position, he delivered for his team, and he cashed in when he got the chance in this one. When you take to the road, Steve, any win will do. But when you get this kind of offense, it's very satisfying. Well, it also sends a message to your club and to that club that you showed up to play. I guess it's that time again. We wrap up this 2K Sports broadcast of MLB. For John, Steve, our entire 2K Sports crew, I'm Gary Thorne. Adieu, adieu.